Ronnie. Ty, over here, this side. Uh, I feel like when they announced this card was coming to Sydney, you, you seem to be the name that everyone assumed would be near the top of this card. So I guess what does it feel like now that you're only a few days away from fighting and you're, you might have the biggest pop of the entire night? The biggest what? The biggest ovation. That'd be cool. Uh, no, I'm pumped. It's been uh, six years since since I fought in Sydney, my debut. Uh, Camp's been awesome. I've, I've trained in Sydney, trained at home, Zoo Fitness. Uh, it's been awesome. I'm pumped. It's ready to uh, get out there, put a show on for, for the Aussies and, and get this party going. Have you had to do any like more media, considering, like a lot, like I said, a lot of people just assume you're the face of this Sydney MMA area. Uh, and like when we did the, the ceremony yesterday, you had your own scrum because they called you over to do that. Did you have any more obligations as compared to previous fights? I don't know. All the cameras want to see my ugly head. Not just here in Australia, everywhere. It's all right. Historically in the past, like when you fought Stefan Struve, you've done very well against tall, lanky opponents. So what do you make of Alexander Volkov as an opponent? I think it's going to be a, uh, I think he's a great opponent. I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, obviously, everyone knows how big he is. And uh, I don't think uh, he's going to do too well with me on his chest and coming forward. So... There ain't really much game plan. Get in there, fucking smack on, and then we after party. Will your family be in attendance? My family will be there. Uh, you uh, grew the hair out for this one, unless you've cut it and you're hiding it from us. But uh, <laughs> do you feel like that's going to give you some extra powers in the cage on Sunday? No, I haven't fought for a long time, so I'm broke. I just need some money to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> sure someone who sees this can help you out. Well, hopefully Sunday, and then Monday I might get a haircut. Ty, over here. Uh, this week there's been a lot of um, stuff online, the cameras following you around, talking about what it means not to just be back in Sydney, but also kind of so close to Western Sydney. What does it mean to be fighting on such a, like, such a high-level card so close to, to where you grew up? It yeah, means a lot. It's... Uh, going to be awesome <laughs> it means good fucking mad how was it to go i'm not sure how often if you still live in western sydney how often you get to go back kind of to the area how was it to be back i live in the area everyone knows where i live i'm still there probably always will be uh it's great to be home good to be doing uh you know daddy things with my son and it's it's, it's i feel refreshed i feel good you know usually by now i'm like fuck this Let's just fight, but I feel good. I feel really good. Thank you very much. Ty, just a question here. Um, what does it mean to you um, to be fighting on the same card as such a close friend and business partner in Tyson Pedro? Yeah, it's been a long time, me and Tyson, uh, to fight in a card together. Uh, you know, he's our family. He's family. Uh, and uh, all our family's going to be there supporting, so it's going to be awesome. Just um, like old time. Um, you usually fight um, two or three times a year. You're a very active fighter. Um, this is the first time that we'll be seeing you for 2023. Was there any particular reason um, why you hadn't taken it or hadn't fought any earlier? I needed a break. <laughs> the last Russian crushed my face in. <laughs> so I uh, had to have a bit of time off. Uh, I, I, I miss my family. I miss home. I'm, a, I'm, from, I'm not from much, you know. So family and... And the area means a lot to me. So I needed home. I needed to go home. So I went home. I feel good now and I'm fucking ready to roll. Last one for me. Um, after the fight with Pavlovich, is it sort of weighing on you or, or an, an, air, an, uh, an air of importance um, to put a dominant performance um, over Alexander Volkov this weekend to sort of... Oh, definitely. I've My last two fights, I've, I've gotten a hiding. So I'm coming out with... Uh, I'm coming out for heads. <laughs> just down the front here, Ty. Um, you said before that you, your, your game plan is just go in and, and, and box on there. Um, what sort of what do you see in terms of the future after this fight? Where do you think you're planning on going? Well, first I'll be going to the World of Entertainment, Penrith Panthers, for the after party. 
And then, look, the UFC rings me. They say, do you want to fight this guy? I say, yes. That's how it works. So the after party will be quite a big lot of shoeys? Western Sydney, get ready. And just one more for me. Um, with the main event, what, what are you predicting uh, how that's going to turn out? Uh, death by Israel. Ty, just over here, just over here on your uh, on your left. Oh, yeah. So obviously, you know, <laughs> obviously Alex Volkov, you know, he presents a lot of problems both in his physicality, you know, his height, his reach, but as well as his skill set. But does that excite you as an opponent, you know, to be able to see how far you've come in your career that now, you know, you're fighting these top tier heavyweights? Yeah, that's uh, that's my aim. Uh, if I want to fight, I want to fight the best, uh, and uh, I fought the best. Got a hide in the last two, but um, I'm in uh, I'm number five or whatever it is now. So there, there ain't no easy fights up here, and I ain't looking for any easy fights. Uh, they offered me Volkov, and I said yes. And uh, I think it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, if it's not going to be boring, I'm not going to fucking be cuddling each other the whole 25 minutes or whatever it is. Oh, how many? I was about to say that's fuck. That's ages. Well, for five minutes, the whole five minutes, you know. So. Sure. And look, last one from me. You know, your career got off to a really, you know, explosive and quick start. You know, some dominant finishes and a lot of fights back to back. Do you think that period where you sort of stepped back and slowed down a bit, you know, when you got that work in with DC over at AKA, do you think that that was sort of crucial for the development of your career to just be able to step back, slow down, and focus on developing a little bit? Well, I think the fighter I am today is <laughs> very different to the fighter I was on on that losing streak to this losing streak. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck. Let's go. G'day, Ty. Uh, so you're fighting at home. Does that mean you get to stay at home? Or does UFC make you stay at the fighter hotel? Uh, I've actually been staying uh, down the road near the beach in Bronte. We don't stick out down there, but it's a nice place. We fit in. Um, and you're one of five Samoans um, in, the, in the UFC, and there's four of you fighting in, um, on Sunday. What does it mean to you to be representing uh, your culture on the, a massive platform like the UFC? Very proud. Uh, I always uh, represent where I'm from and who I am, and uh, to do it with my Usos is, is very important and very good for a little small island of Samoa. And I know uh, you probably shouldn't look past um, events, but Saturday night, have you figured out how you're going to grieve when the Panthers lose, lose to the Warriors? I've got a thousand on it that you'll be grieving. Hey, up the wires, mate. A thousand says so you won't. Yeah. thousand? Uh, I don't know. I don't have that kind of money. Oh, mate. well then. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Wah. No. You reckon he's going to win? Yeah, mate. Come on, man. Wow, wow, wow. I'll wipe your tears away at the after party. Wipe my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.